In one of the blog posts, we deconstructed how to build some header graphics. So it's pretty simple, but what's neat about it is um, that I use PowerPoint to build the graphics. So what I want to do is show you uh, what we came up with and then how to do that in PowerPoint. So it's really easy. Um, you can see here, these were the images that I created. So I kind of started here. And if we go through, I had different iterations of that. And eventually, I came to a point where I settled with this pill shape. And I, I chose the pill shape because I kind of like the, the shape of the, the header graphic. Uh, works with the shape of the buttons here. And I also like this because it was an organic uh, kind of feel to it. You know, they got the, the round shape versus the harsh lines. And also with the character sticking out of the shape a little bit, a little bit more organic, a little bit more informal, which wor works really well uh, with an interactive scenario that I want to kind of a little bit more personality to it. It's all subjective, but you know, this is kind of what we settled on. The key thing here is I want to show you how to use PowerPoint to build your graphics. So if uh, if you're not a Photoshop person or illustrator and, and you're trying to find ways to build graphics, PowerPoint's a great way. Uh, to work with your graphics. I use it all the time. And I'm going to show you a few uh, production tips in the process. So let's go ahead and look at the original file. And I'll kind of explain uh, what I did. So you can see uh, the different iterations here. And eventually I came to a point where I uh, have this uh, oval uh, pill shape. Now a couple of things I'll point out because this is what we'll look at is when you're working with the shapes, we're going to look at what I call the transparent echo technique, which is kind of this process of adding the same character twice. So you kind of have a background version of it and then your focal point. And then we'll play around with that. And then the other part is, you know, how do I get this pill shape and get the person's head uh, to stick outside of the shape? So those are kind of the few key things. You'll also learn a few like nuanced production tips that make all this stuff easier. So first thing is when I'm working in PowerPoint, I'm using it for my graphics tool. Uh, what I want to do is whatever I build, I want to save that as an image. There's a couple ways you can do that. Let's say I'm done with this and I want to save this as an image. I can hit Control A and that selects everything. I can group it if I want to. And then I can right click and then I choose Save as Picture. And then whatever I've selected, it's going to be saved out as an image. Right? So that's one way to do that. In this case, I actually like using my PowerPoint slides as my image. So I'm just going to save my PowerPoint slide as an image and I'll show you how that works. Um, in this case, the other thing you'll notice is because I'm saving this as an image, these images are more banner size. So you, I think it's like a 10 by 3 aspect ratio. So we're going to reset the PowerPoint slide. And you can set it to any type of dimension that you want. Uh, we're just going to use 10 inches by 3 inches, which gives us you know about 1,000 by 300 pixels, give or take. So let's go ahead and open up a blank PowerPoint slide and start from scratch. And then I'll walk through some of these little production nuances. So the first thing we want to do is set our PowerPoint slide to a certain size. So I'm just going to go to the Design tab, which is up here. right? And then I'm going to come over to Slide Size. And by default, the slide size is going to be 16 by 9. Uh, you can change it to 4 by 3, which is kind of a more common older one. If you go to Custom Slide, uh, you can change it to anything you want. In this case, we know uh, it was 10 by 3. So we're going to go ahead and do 10 inches by 3 inches, hit OK, and that's going to create more of that banner type look. I go ahead and save this while I'm working on it. PowerPoint can be a little bit finicky when you start doing uh, different things with it. So always save your work, especially when you're working with media. That's just a good tip. All right, so in this case, first thing we want to do is add some text. I'm uh, just going to add a text block. Right, that was our title. You know, here is, is my title. And um, we don't care about the font and all that stuff. We're just going to go ahead and make it really big, right? We'll just say this this word. This is about the size we want. Maybe we'll make it bold. All right. So here's our title, right? Easy enough to do. Uh, and we want to add a character to that. One of the great things when you're working with Articulate 360 is that you have access to Studio 360. Now a lot of people aren't working with Studio anymore because. Makes sense. You have Rise, you have Storyline. That's where most of your course authoring is done. Even if you're not using Studio to build e-learning courses anymore, go ahead and install it. You'll get this Articulate tab. And when you look at what's available to you, you'll notice you have a content library here. So that means you get all those content library slides that are going to work uh, for PowerPoint. 
You have the characters, so all those characters, that's what we're going to work today. And then you have all these other assets as well. So that's all available to you. So even if you're not using uh, Studio to build e-learning courses, you still have PowerPoint, you have the Studio assets, so you can use those uh, when you're working in PowerPoint. In this case, we're using the characters uh, because that works really well for us. So we're going to choose our character, just insert character. That's going to open up this panel. You've got all these different characters. If you haven't seen this before, you've got photographic characters, uh, which you can see here. You can install them, download them. Um, each character here is going to have different poses. So you can see you have some sorting options with the poses. Uh, if we go back to characters, uh, we also have these modern illustrated characters. Uh, what's nice with the illustrated characters, both modern and classic, which you can see here is the classic. Uh, both of these character packs have expressions uh, and they're exactly all the same. So it's easy to kind of change and map the different expressions and uh, they have all these different poses. Uh, so you have all those assets available to you with Studio 360. We're going to go ahead, go to the photo character. We've got this jet dude. Uh, where is he at? Uh, since I already downloaded him and was using him earlier, we're just going to use him. I'm going to go to the pose I want, which is this one here. I'm going to insert him. And now, I'm going to bring them in here. Now, one of the challenges when you work with an image like this is that uh, you, the height really limits what you can do with it. And so uh, I'm going to have to crop the character. If you haven't cropped objects in PowerPoint, the pictures, just double click on it. Uh, that's going to open up your picture tools, which you can see up here. And then you can see here's your crop option. Now, uh, a couple of things you can do if you just click crop, uh, you can crop by hand and just move the object and crop it if you want to. Uh, you can also crop uh, to shapes. So let's say you want to crop it to a circle shape or oval shape. You can see how that works. Uh, and you can also crop it to an aspect ratio, to a one to one. And you can see how that works. Now it's cropping to shape and uh, the aspect ratio. So we want to turn off and make it square, right? And so you can see now it's a square. Now when you're cropping, um, you can move the object around inside of that. So that'll determine how you're cropping it. We'll just, uh, this is fine. We'll keep them as a square and let's go ahead and size it up. All right. So we've got our character. This works perfect. As long as I don't go outside the slide, if I go outside the slide, uh, this is going to kind of show you what it looks like. I like to stretch this out so I get a better picture here. This is going to show you what the final image looks like. So if I want his head inside here, I'm just going to drop that down a little bit and you can move the object around. When you're happy with what you have, all you need to do is save this slide as an image. So you just go to file, save as, choose your image format. I like to choose PNG. The reason I choose PNG is where things are transparent, they'll remain transparent. If you choose JPEG, the transparent areas in your images are going to be uh, filled with white. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're saving out the whole slide. But if you do the right click and save as picture uh, that you want to preserve the transparency, PNG is the way to go. So once you save it, we're not going to save it because I already did that. Um, you're going to see a uh, slide like this here. Let me pull that in. And then you can see there's my image that I saved. So that's how you do that. It's really simple. Um, the nice thing with PowerPoint is you have all these image editing options. So let's go ahead and duplicate the slide. Do Control D. That duplicates the slide. And um, we're going to work on this here. So uh, one thing you could do is if you want the title to be bigger and you want the character to be there, but a little bit more subdued, if you double click on that, you've got all these different picture tools. So you can play around with the brightness. Um, you can play around with some of the color. You know, making the character lighter, right? That's a nice way. Uh, the character's there, uh, but uh, with the character being lighter, you can, you know, stretch your text out and you can make your text larger. Oops, and let's bring it to the front. I'm going to show you a tip about bringing to the front. Obviously, you can just use the arrange, bring to front. Uh, if you're in the home tab and you go to select pane and selection pane here, it's kind of like your order, your stacking order. So you can uh, easily move those things around. So I, I usually have that open when I'm working with my graphics tools. So that's one way to do that. You can right click and save it. I kind of felt this was a lot of white space. So then I played around with the character. Let me make, maybe I make the character a little bit more um, prominent, right? So you can play around with that. I didn't really like that. Uh, this is where I came out with what I call the transparent echo technique. So let's let's duplicate this one here again. 
I'll move it down here. So this one, uh, what I did is I want to have my prominent character or main character uh, and I want to use that same image. So we're just going to duplicate that. So I want to use the same image. I'm going to make it gray. So we go to format. I'm uh, going to go color. We'll make it gray. And then I'm just going to enlarge it. So the idea of the transparent echo technique is uh, you have the same image, you duplicate it. Some people will rotate the image so it's um, flipped. Uh, it just depends on what you want to do. Um, we're going to make this a little bit larger here. Now you can zoom out right to do that. Make it a little bit larger and then you can fill uh, the image so you can see how that works. Now uh, let's put them to the back here. Uh, you can see how that kind of works and then it's just a matter of making the image work any way you want to. Now in this case it was kind of weird because the eyes are drawn, you're drawn to the eyes. So I didn't want that. So I kind of then played around with well, what if I just use his shirt? You know, the shirt gives you uh, some visual reference, right? So you kind of get that and you get a little bit of texture, right? So you can see how that works. Um, so that's what I did. Now one of the things when you're working with the zoomed in image like this, you can see what it looks like here, but it's kind of hard to then work on the slide. So you can't quite tell uh, where the slide is at. So you can crop that image and you see what your options are. Let's see what happens um, if we do crop to fit and you can see it's cropping to fit the, the entire area here. Well, we don't want to do that. Let's see what happens when we do crop to fill and you can see it's cropping and filling that entire area and we don't want to do that either. So what you can do is just grab this, do cropping and then just crop it down to the slide. I usually just and it's nice. It just snaps into place and snaps into place here. And it's pretty close. We can fine tune it because so now I can zoom in. It's going to be easier. Oops. I can zoom in. It's going to be easier to work with this. Now it looks like this isn't quite cropped. OK, but we're going to fix that here. Let's see. Yeah, so it didn't snap. All right. So let's do that. We're good to go. Now I wanted to add a little bit of color. So a couple of simple tips. I was working with the blue color so we can do the blue. We're just going to add, add an overlay. Uh, before we add the overlay, I want to show you something. When you have an image here, when you have an image and you want to colorize it, uh, you can do this here, right? And choose one of these colors and that works. These colors are derived from your theme colors. So if you uh, want to change that, just go into your design tab and you can come up with your own theme colors here, right? Customize colors and then you can add your own theme colors and that's how you can control the colors that are available to you. I like to add an overlay just because it gives me a little bit more control and I can do things uh, with the overlays like if I want to add gradients or things like that. So in this case we're just going to add another shape here. We'll just grab a rectangle shape and let's just drag that and fill this up here. Um, and again you can see it's sitting on top. Uh, we're just going to do this here. I'm going to grab the character. This is a kind of a trick I use all the time when I'm working with things. I'll just do a color pick from his shirt so there's some visual tie in if I didn't have a color to work with. So I just go shape fills, eyedropper, and then you can just pull in the color. Uh, we'll pull in a lighter, lighter color here. And then you can see how that works. We're going to overlay that. Uh, let's get rid of the outline. Now one other thing we're going to do is make sure we have it in the right layer. So this is where the selection pane really comes in handy. And um, now it's sitting over everything. It's a solid block. That works OK, right? Um, what you could do though is change the transparency on that. So let's go to the slide properties or the format shape properties and then just play around with the transparency of that object. And you can see you can go from nothing to just a little bit of that green. And so you can play around uh, with the colors there. So if you're happy with that, probably want to change this text to white. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just go to the Home tab and change the text to white. And then it pops out. If you're happy with that, you right click, save it as an image and you're good to go. Now here is the challenge. I wanted that pill shape. How do I get that pill shape? Well, this is where understanding the different production techniques and PowerPoint come in handy. So the pill shape is a rounded shape. So let's go ahead and do a rounded rectangle. And um, let's we've got this here. I'm just going to drag it to the bottom and over. 
With a rounded rectangle, I can do that here. Now I'm going to get rid of the fill color for now just so we can um, see the shape. And I'm going to position it to where I want it. I kind of like it here. I just need to then position my text so it's in, in a better location. It's centered. Everything looks fine. So now what I need to do is figure out you know, how do I get that pill shape. And this is where uh, working with PowerPoint is really cool. Um, let's do this here. I'm going to duplicate this shape, just drag it off screen so we have it. I'm also going to duplicate. Oops, that's not what I wanted to duplicate. Let me delete that. I'm going to duplicate this pill shape and we're going to drag it over here as well. In PowerPoint, you can do a combined shape. Now I'm going to fill this so we can see this. So let's fill this with orange. So in PowerPoint, you can do this combined shape feature. And so you select two shapes. And then what you can do is you go to Format and you can um, combine the shapes. In this case, we're going to subtract. So we're going to subtract one shape from the other. So you can see, um, basically, I would start with this. My first one is my primary shape. And then the second shape is what I'm going to use to punch a hole into my primary. And then I go to Subtract. And now it created the pill shape. Now I'm going to fill this with white. So that kind of matches our background. Right. And let me get rid of this here. And we're just going to drag this right over. And let's get rid of the transparency on this. Let's change the properties. We're going to change the transparent. Let's make it solid. So now you can see I've got my pill shape uh, image. Now the challenge is I've got this guy and his head's not sticking over. That's easy enough to fix. We're just going to duplicate it. And we're going to drag him back over. Let's make sure he's snapped into place, right? Um, matching here. Uh, okay. Looks like he's snapped into place. You could, if you want to, you can select. Uh, and we'll actually do this with a selection pane. You can see, you can uh, hide all. What we're going to do is now select both jets. Let's just make sure jets align. So I can see he's not quite aligned. So we're going to go ahead and align him to the center. And let's make sure align them to the middle. And that should be perfectly aligned. Now let's go ahead and show all. So we've got our first jet image on top of our second jet image. So what we're going to do is on the first jet image, double click. Let's go ahead and crop them and take him off of, oops, take him off of the uh, bottom here so you can't see it. And now you can see. Uh, he's looking out there. So basically we just overlaid uh, one image on top of the other and that makes it look like his head's coming out of there. And we've got that little uh, transparent echo technique and all of that. So pretty simple technique, right? It's kind of cool. Um, but you can see how you can do that cutout. There's all sorts of things you can do. And then all you have to do is right click and save that as an image. And then you'll end up uh, with an image that looks like this. And as you can see, uh, when I insert it in the course, it looks pretty nice. Hopefully that helps you a lot of little nuanced production techniques there in PowerPoint, you know, working with the cropping tool, coloring images, uh, using the merge shape features uh, to combine shapes or cut things out. A lot of neat things that you can do in PowerPoint. And if you're working with images or working with PowerPoint as a graphics tool, always use that selection pane. It's going to be really easy working with all the different objects on the screen. Don't worry. Don't uh, or play around with different ways to layer semi-transparent shapes. A lot of new effects you can create with that. And then right click and save as an image or save your slide as an image. And then you're going to have some quick graphics that you can use uh, in your e-learning courses.